Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. Thanks so much for joining us today. Well, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Hebrews chapter 2. If it's possible, you reach over right now, pick up your own copy of God's Word and join me there, Hebrews chapter 2. I'll read the opening four verses of the second chapter as we begin our teaching time here in a moment. Also in my hand right now is one of our gospel tracts that we publish here. Remember, by a gospel tract, I simply mean a short written presentation which tells a lost person how they can know Jesus Christ as their Savior. By the way, if you do know Christ as Savior and you're wanting to learn how to tell the gospel, get our gospel tracts. They will enable you to have good ways of clearly presenting the gospel. You can borrow from them. For 76 years now, our ministry has been producing these tracts in different languages and then just giving them away all over the world. By giving, I mean we do it free of charge. For 76 years, God has been faithful in giving us people whose hearts also are burdened to see lost people receive the gospel, and then if they receive it, the seed of the Word of God can be taken by the Spirit of God, and repentance will come, and souls will be saved. Dear friend, if you are interested in seeing people come to Christ and what we're doing is something that seems to ring well in your soul, why don't you consider helping us do that? Visit our website or you can listen to my announcer at the end of the broadcast. Both of those methods, our website and my announcer, will give you contact information. And by the way, when my announcer does give our contact information, pick up on that. Give me your name and your mailing address. If you'll do that, I will send you a complete sample packet containing one each of our 42 gospel tracts. Do that. Do it today. All right, let me begin our study time by this question. Have you ever been stopped in the middle of a task or discussion so you could make a, an important side note? Most of us have done that. As a youngster, I recall my grandfather, he always came to visit during deer hunting season. He loved to hunt and did so up into his early 80s. Well, one day, as I was with my grandfather skinning a deer in our barn, well, actually, he was doing the skinning. I was just there with him. Anyway, in the middle of his gentle lesson on how to skin a deer, Grandpa Smith stopped. He set his knife down, looked at me straight in the eye, and went into a serious discussion on what it meant to be a man, what a man looks like. But one thing he said, which I never, ever did forget or will forget, he said, and I quote now, if you want to know what a man is supposed to be like, just watch your dad. He's a real man, end quote. Now, friend, if you're eight years of age and somebody says that about your daddy, you remember it. Now, as I come here to Hebrews chapter 2, the Holy Spirit is going to cause the human writer to set his skinning knife, his pen, aside for a moment so he can teach us something very important. These next four verses are addressed to believers, but frankly, they also make a serious point to somebody who doesn't know Christ as Savior. No matter who you may be, if you can, set aside your important task for a moment that you're doing and listen to the Word of God from the directed to us from the Spirit of God through the pen of a human writer. These words may just save your soul. Well, before I read, I want to encourage you about those gospel tracts I mentioned a moment ago. The one in my hand right now is entitled, You Can Know. You Can Know. It gives here real, true, eternal answers to some of life's serious questions. Questions like this, where do the saved go when they die? Where do the lost go when they die? Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? Every one of these questions is answered by Scripture. And we lead from these questions into a clear, simple presentation of how to receive Christ as Savior 
repenting of your sin, and so on. Great gospel track. You can know. Get it from us. Remember, have pen and paper ready when my announcer gives our contact information. I begin now here. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 to 4 says this, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Stop right there. Sometimes when I'm preaching, I will stop and make a challenge to the congregation to whom I'm speaking, even though my sermon is only perhaps a third of the way through. Now, as the Holy Spirit is speaking to us in the book of Hebrews, he stops every couple of chapters or so so that he can call the readers today, that's you and me, to a decision. Now, to be sure, Bible scholars refer to these decision passages as warning passages, and they are that. But the goal of these passages is to prompt us to make a decision on what is being said. And various scholars disagree on how many of these warning or decision passages there are. Some say there are five, some say there are six, some say there are seven. Frankly, the number is not so critical as will be our willingness to make a willful decision about God's truth. And you already know, with every decision will mean that we will have to adjust how we live. Well, here in the first four verses of chapter two, there's a challenge to not drift from God's word. Don't drift. That's the challenge. Verse one ends with these words, lest at any time we should let them slip. Now that word slip comes from the naval term. It's a nautical term. It was used of a boat that became untied from its mooring and began to be drifting away from the dock. I'm gonna use four words between today and Wednesday, all beginning with the letter W to walk through verses one through four. The first one is the word warning, based upon verse one, warning. The warning is this, drifting from God's truth is possible. That's the warning. Drifting from God's truth is possible. The we here mentioned in verse 1 are the Hebrew believers, and by the way, the penman himself includes himself in this. These people had heard God's truth, verse 1 says, because of how God had communicated his truth. These folk were then to take heed to it. They heard it. Now they were to take heed to it. They were to pay attention to it, and they were to hold their minds on it. But please notice that uh, it was now their responsibility to hold their minds to it. Their heeding of God's truth was to enable them to hold on to the truth and not let it drift away, not let it slip away. So word beginning with W, number one, is warning. Word number two is actually the word, word, W-O-R-D, based upon verses two and three. The book of Hebrews begins with a blunt declaration that God has spoken. He spoke a lot and through various methods, the opening verses of the book say. The capstone of all that God is going to say to mankind is that he sent us his son. Jesus was both the messenger and the message of God. Verse 2 makes it clear that God holds people accountable for what he has said. Once he gives his word, even if it's given by angels, verse 2 says, God would reward or judge people based upon his communication. If you believe his communication on how to get saved and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, what a blessing. If you do not heed it, what a curse it comes upon your life. In verse 3 is one of the best known, confronting questions that you're going to find in all of the word of God, Old or New Testament. Here's what it says. How shall we, the author includes himself again, how shall we escape if we neglect or we disregard or handle carelessly so great salvation? Again, the we there includes the uh, the penman here along with his readers. He challenges himself to make a decision along with the believers to whom he wrote. He's going to say, don't treat God's word flippantly. Don't treat it carelessly. Don't treat it light with lightness. 
frankly, my friend, in preparing to share this study today in the broadcast, I myself had to look at this, ask myself the question, and I had to deal with the fact, am I going to reaffirm what my attitude was going to be towards the Scriptures? But once I had reaffirmed what my attitude was going to be, I immediately had to ask myself this. I asked myself, how will I know if I am leaning in a direction of letting God's word be handled lightly by my life? And what is something, if I begin to handle it carelessly or haphazardly, how will I know that? Well, to answer that question honestly, I was going to have to adjust my actions surrounding my use of my Bible and my actions in taking the Word of God and making it, implementing it in my life. Recently, I read a quote from a famous, famous missionary named Jim Elliott. He wrote this back in the early 1950s. He was martyred for the cause of Christ. He said this, and I quote, I may no longer depend on pleasant impulses to bring me before the Lord. I must rather respond to principles I know are right, whether I feel them to be enjoyable or not, end quote. That's a powerful statement. And the point he was making was simply this. Since you and I desperately need God, since we desperately need his word of truth in the midst of the world of truthlessness in which we live, since you and I desperately need to be at the throne of grace of God to find help for our helplessness that you and I are helpless on our own as we know, Since you and I live in a truthless world and need his truth, since you and I are helpless and there's a throne of grace to get help, then we dare not only just go to God's word and go to God's throne when we feel like it. Out of the principle of our great need, we must go to God even when we feel no emotional tug to do so. Actually, When we feel no emotional tug to be before God's throne, that's the time we need to be there most. The time we we feel no emotional tug to be reading God's word, that's the time we need to read it the most. Satan loves to have us make decisions out of our emotions, out of our mood at the moment rather than on principle. Let me ask you, dear Christian friend, what principles guide your coming and approach to the Word of God. Do you go regularly? I go to the Word of God personally every single day, first thing in the morning. I get up early to do it. That's when my brain is best. Whatever your brain is best, give it to God. Go to His Word. Don't let anything crowd that situation, that opportunity out of your life. Perhaps, dear friend, you're listening and you do not know Christ as Savior. God has spoken to the world. He spoke through his son. That's the capstone of all God has said. Jesus said, I came that people might have everlasting life through me. That was his message. Whether you feel like you need a savior or not, the bottom line is your sin means that you are on your way to hell. The curse and damnation of of your sin is on your life. And the only hope you have is Jesus. Run to him to be saved right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.